bird dog and the narcissist. I want you to come to these meetings that we are having in Orlando on May the 5th, June the 2nd, and July the 7th. Now, maybe you'll watch it after May, but you can make the June one. Maybe you'll watch it after June, but you can come to the July one. Maybe you'll listen to July one. Well, watch my videos on YouTube. If you see the word narcissist, watch it. There'll be a lot of other titles that go along with it. But we are trying to help people that have been hurt, wounded, confused, destroyed, hurt by somebody with a narcissist personality disorder. So being a prophet, you don't have to ask me a lot of questions. I kind of know what the questions are. And I would suspect, Manny, that somebody's saying, why does this guy talk about the Jezebel thing? And why does he talk about uh, this narcissist thing or the Absalom thing? Well, maybe because enough preachers aren't. And we need to hear it. What makes you think we need to hear about that and not just Jesus loves me? Jesus loves you so much, he wants you to understand more about the blessings of the Lord. I'll give you an example. On the screen, you're seeing an uh, insert of a L-19 plane. It's a light plane. I think it weighs less than 3,000 pounds. The fuel range is only about 500 miles. It's called a bird dog. It was one of my jobs for a season in the Army. Look at the plane. Those of you in the room, when you get, see, can see the video, it's called Bird Dog. It was one of my jobs in the military. I loved it. We patrolled the border. For a season, we did it. I was not the pilot. It was the pilot and I. I wanted to be the pilot. But with all the explosions that I was involved with the military, it caused some damage to my ears. And I only have 15%, less than 50% hearing in this ear, less than 50 or 40% in this ear. And I hear distorted because it was nerve damage uh, with, with tanks and artillery. Uh, and because of that, I couldn't get the pilot license. But I was a member of the crew. And I drew flight pay on top of it. And it would be me and the pilot. Now, if you repeat this, I will deny it and say you are confused. I know it's hard to understand how I'm 39 years old, but I was in Germany when the Berlin, Berlin Wall went up. I believe I was a sergeant at the time and sirens went off. And I came out of my room. I had my own room because I was a sergeant. I came out of my room and there was chaos out there. And the sirens were blasting. The sergeant over me said this. Get your men together. We're going to war. I said, war? What's happening? And they said, they're building a wall. I said, what wall? That Berlin. And it became very interesting. And they made a border between East Germany and West Germany. And they had a 10 meter strip. They would plow the ground. Maybe a uh, producer can put an insert there of the East West German border back at that time. Many of you remember when. President Reagan looked in the camera, Mr. Gorbachev, tear that wall down. I was there when the wall went up. It was an interesting time. And people were trying to escape from East Germany into West Germany. And what they did was they plowed the ground 
so that when people ran across the border, they could see their footsteps. They kept it plowed. They kept their ground plowed regularly so you could see footsteps. And in the middle of the 10 meter strip was the barbed wire fences. And one of my jobs at then was we would patrol the border. And I was uh, an intelligence officer. I was a forward observer in the artillery. I couldn't get my pilot license because of my hearing. I love helicopters. There's that bird dog plane again. And there's the seat, there's a driver, and then the observer, which I was the observer, sat behind the driver. You know, it was behind him with a clipboard and a pad. And my job was we flew very low to the ground, which was under radar. We flew very, very low. And uh, my job was to spite, to spot, if people were trying to escape over the border, where they were trying to escape, where the footprints were. And it was a very interesting job. I, uh, I was in Germany with this for four years in the artillery. It was very interesting. I liked it. And uh, then I would look for the East German soldiers where they were there. And I would spot them. There's, there's two. There was always two. I never saw one by themselves. And there's two of them. Now, I would have to write down their rank. I would have to write down if they had any medals. I would have to write down what kind of weapons they had. Did they have a rifle? Did they have a machine gun? Did they have a rifle? And did they have a pistol? What kind of a pistol? So I would have to, what, what they were wearing, what color clothes, they, everything about them, I would have to write that down. There I see them, there's two of them, they're walking together, they're going over there. This is the coordinates where they are. They have a rifle and this is the kind of handgun. And uh, I would have to know my enemy. You have to know your enemy. A lot of Christians don't. They think the devil is some little weird thing with horns and BBDs and a tail. No. The devil will show up five foot two, eyes are blue, or tall, dark, and handsome. Be careful. We need... The gift of discernment. I don't want to take time with a lot of scriptures, but I'll tell you how it says. It's in Hosea. My people, God said. My people, God said. My people, God said. Hosea, Hosea 4, 6. My people, God said, are being destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Now we're going to church. Oh, blessed, highly favored. To a anointed to be disappointed. And we got all the little cool shades and walk around with a smiley face and lives aren't being changed. How do you know lives are not being changed? I am recording this in April 2023. Look at the condition. Look at the spiritual climate on the condition of America. And a lot of this got worse when one man said, this is no longer a Christian nation. Look at the spiritual condition of this country. Wait, a majority of the people want abortion. I thank God that more and more states are passing the heartbeat uh, rule. In other words, I, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. You can argue, is the baby a baby yet? When's it become a baby? When is it be you can argue with all of that that you want. But you cannot argue with this or against it. Once there's a heartbeat, that is a living person. So I love the laws that some states are passing, like in Florida, about once the baby has a heartbeat, you cannot perform an abortion. It's very obvious now that that's a living person. 
People are being destroyed for the lack of knowledge because everything just, if it feels good, do it. It must be okay. TikTok says so. It must be okay. A, a YouTube influencer says so. I don't want to get all fall into that right now. Use your own imagination. But God said, my people are being destroyed for the lack of knowledge. John Delicio says, not if I can help it. We are going to expose the works of the enemy. Like Apostle Paul said to one group of people, we are not ignorant to Satan's devices. You, when you're in the middle, the first thing you better learn is your enemy. You better know your enemy and what their capability is. What did I say this is April? Did I say this April? We have May, June, July, the first Fridays dealing with the narcissist thing. In August we begin dealing with the Jezebel thing. Do you know what's going on in the world? Other countries don't respect us anymore. Are we still big brother? Are we still a superpower? Do we know our enemies? Oh, they're nice. They give us, they, they, we, we're not. You know, they're nice. Let's give them all of this $82 billion worth of, uh, of uh, weapons that our taxpayers pay for. John Delacia don't need 82. You can use 82 billion? John Delacia don't need 82 billion. No, but I'll take the tithe on it. I'll take 8 billion, okay? Eight billion. Did I get the eight billion? Did you? Get, no, we gave it to our enemies so they can make money on it, selling it to our enemies. You got to know your enemy and their capability. If you're a fighter, now in high school I did wrestling, and one of the first things they told us, Kathy, you know what it was? Protect yourself at all times. If somebody just kicked you between the legs, you know what the referees say? I told you to protect yourself. They will tell you in sports, protect yourself at all times. You go in the army, you don't only learn about your capability and what you can do and what you can't do. You got to know what the other team can do. What are they capable of? How fast can that guy run carrying that ball? How much punishment can the quarterback take before we make him fold? How fair is that referee? You have to know everything about the game. And how much can we push the fans before they turn against us? How many fouls can we get away with? How many times can we call time? You not only have to know your capability and your God's capability, you have to know there's an enemy on the loose, there are wicked angels on their loose, and there are terrible demons on the loose. We're going to expose them. So we know how to protect ourselves from the snares of the fallower. So we know how to give no place to the devil. Oh, what did you just say? Really? What did you just do? Really? What are you wanting, really? Oh, gee. I just heard somebody talk about that narcissist thing. Could it be? And you start to wake up and realize you're a Christian, you're not a doormat. Amen. That's why I teach about the Jezebel thing. That's why I'm teaching about the narcissist symptoms. So people can be aware. Do you know how, oh, I'm doing this 43 years so far. I preached in almost every major denomination, non-denominational, interdenominational, hundreds and hundreds of services a year. Do you know how many times I've been to a church and I've seen that church was controlled by Jezebel? And somebody said this to me. Don't get mad at me. You know who you are and I know you're watching. Oh, I know they're Jezebels, but they're nice Jezebels. 
What do they do about that, they said? You better put a double armor on. You better put all your armor on and somebody else's too. Because you're wide open for attack. Ain't no such thing. Why? Because they put tires on somebody's car? Because they took them out to eat? Because they're whispering in your ear? We cannot be ignorant to Satan's devices. Absalom did it to his own father. Oh, maybe I'm talking a little loud. Maybe I'm passionate. I am glad I am. But I hope you hear my heart saying, The Lord came that we might have life. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. Well, if the Lord came and you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, why are there so many Christians that are not free? Because we're not being taught the full gospel. Here we do. Don't get mad at me. I'm trying to help you. Why are you yelling at me? I'm trying to get your attention. That narcissist thing, that Jezebel thing is terrible. Now, let me ref- we're going to end this. I think you got the point. We're going to pick it up. Make sure you watch the one on, on that you're watching now and share this with somebody. Bird dog and the narcissist. We're going to do another one called racing and the narcissist. Is anybody mad at me? Does anybody understand what I'm saying? Do you believe I'm fighting for people? I am. I am. I really am. I really, really, really am. I want you to come get in on the blessings. All right. We love you. We're out of time. Share this with every... If you know a person who's engaged in a relationship and you have strong concerns about their person and relationship with, warn them and tell them to go online and learn everything they can about the narcissist personality disorder. And love them enough to share this with, even with their parents. Fight for them. Fight for them. Now, after they know all of the facts, and they still want to go down the road, one uh, person asked a psychologist today, well, can there be two narcissists in the same relationship? Uh, I wouldn't call it double blessings. Help them, warn them, warn their family, warn their friends. You're in danger, you're going down the wrong road with this type of person. Try to get them help, but if they don't want the help, help yourself. I love you. And that is why on July 7th, our service emphasis will be freedom from abuse whether from the narcissist or anything else. I shouldn't say that. Healing from abuse for that one. Healing from abuse. All right.